So the biggest mistake you could make when you're trying to take a blues solo is to forget that you're playing a song, a song with melody. If you remember that you're playing a song and that the song has a melody, that will give you an unlimited number of ideas to draw from and you won't feel like your solos are wandering or that they're boring or that you're running out of ideas. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to take that idea from a classic 12 bar blues, Matchbox Blues. This is a song that I just finished teaching last month in my Fingerstyle 5 membership, and all of those lessons continue to be available in the membership. If you'd like to learn more about how to learn songs like that and how to improvise on them, go to the link below or the link on screen to learn more and to sign up. Now, let's get into today's lesson. <laughs> So in a long, long <laughs> amount of time teaching guitar and specifically blues and how to improvise and solo on the blues, the one thing that I've heard more than anything else is my solos feel boring. I'm playing the same stuff over and over. I'm playing the same old licks. My solos are wandering around and have no direction. All totally legit. I've felt this way a zillion times myself. One of the great struggles is how to come up with ideas and play in a you know spontaneous, emotional, expressive way and not run out of ideas. So when I say the biggest mistake is to forget that you're playing a song, think about it. I mean, we tend to think of, oh, well, it's just blues. Blues is a 12 bar chord progression. And that's exactly it. It's a chord progression and we're gonna improvise over those chords. Well, of course, that leads to everything feeling kind of generic, like, oh, it's 12 bar blues, right? It's blues in E, or it's blues in A, or it's blues in whatever. But blues is based on songs. I mean, you get into playing blues because you hear, I don't know, B.B. King, or Lead Belly, or whoever it is, playing a song that really knocks you out. The 12 bar blues is the basis for a lot of songs. If you're gonna solo on the blues, think about it in terms of soloing on a song. So for instance, Matchbox Blues is a completely standard 12 bar blues. Well, originally as played by people like Blind Lemon Jefferson, there's nothing standard about it at all, right? But it, you know, over the years, it's been sort of standardized and straightened out so that you can play it like this. Right, so a 12 bar blues in A, and the melody is just sitting here on the top three strings. And the thing is, the melody and the form are these two tremendous gifts that the song just hands to you on a plate and says, you wanna improvise? Here's what you need to know. And so the chord progression tells you the form, right? It tells you when you're on what chord and how long each chord lasts for, and that the whole thing is 12 bars long. And then the melody tells you within that, what is the phrasing? What is the shape of the melody? So the form is like the big picture, right? And it's typically on a blues, it's this AAB structure, if you think about the words, right? It's a line. Well, I'm sitting here wondering if a matchbox holds my clothes. That's A, that's the first line. Then that gets repeated sitting here wondering if a matchbox will hold my clothes. And then you get C, the third line, the punch line, which usually starts when you get to the five chord. You ain't got so many matches, but I got so far to go, or however it's phrased. And so that's this big picture AAB. And then within that, it's like, what's the phrasing of those words? I'm sitting around wondering, there's the first part of the thought, and here's the answer. Will a matchbox hold my clothes? Great, well now we have two phrases. <laughs> and then we have two bars of what? Nothing as far as the melody is concerned. And then that repeats, but over new chords, right? When you repeat, the reason that it doesn't sound boring or repetitive to hear the A phrase again is because you hear it when you go to the four chord. So underneath it, we have a new context. 
two more bars where the melody's at rest. Now the third line where the, where the words change is also often where the melody changes. And then back to the same answer. So there's really only four phrases in the whole melody. That one, and then this one. That answer. And then you repeat the original one over the four chord and then answer it the exact same way that you did the line before. So we've only got a call and response now, just two little phrases. And finally, we have this third phrase, which then gets answered the exact same way a third time. Or almost the same, right? So it's three phrases, if you think of it as the call phrase and the answer phrase, and then the five chord phrase. Four phrases, if you think of this starting on the four chord as a slight variation. But the point is, it's just three little pairs of phrases. And then, nothing on the back half. So how can you use that as an improviser? Well, you've got phrasing, now you've got rhythm. You can think about it. You can isolate just the rhythm and practice that first, just using like the high string, say. And once you've got that isolated, then you go, well, I can play the melody with that rhythm. Or I could take the A blues scale, maybe with a major third snuck in there on the one chord, and come up with some different licks. So instead of playing, I could play, or I could play, or I could play, Now I've got a little vocabulary of licks, and I could also answer them a few different ways. Instead of answering them, I could answer them, or, it goes on and on. You just have to sort of take that rhythm and experiment with what blues notes will fit into it. So. the five chord. You've got a rhythm for that. So find some different things to play. So you take the big picture of the AAB form and then you look at what the melody is doing and try to come up with some new phrases that fit the phrasing of the original melody. And now you're not just playing random licks, you're playing basically variations on the melody. And finally, there's the back half of each line, right? You could just sit there for two bars every time, or you could start to do things with it. From just sort of dressing up the groove a little bit to maybe playing an answer to the whole opening phrase. Right, because what would a band do, right? If this was actually, someone was actually singing. Well then that's where the fills would start to happen, like guitar, harmonica, piano, horns, whatever. So you can be the fills. Mistakes. But that's the idea. So looking at the form, looking at the phrasing of the melody, trying to fill in some different ideas using the original melody as a rhythmic template is really the idea. And of course there are a lot of other ways you can do this as well, but the idea is be as spontaneous and ex as expressive as you want, but have some strategies in your back pocket because you're not always going to be on your game, but you might still need to play. The great fingerstyle jazz guitar player Gene Bertoncini 
referred to the idea of having an arrangement as a safety net because some nights you're inspired and some nights you're not. The nights that you're not, the safety net of having worked out some things means you can still deliver something that's good and musical and cogent, if that's the word I want. And this is no different. It's like if you're flying and you've just got the ideas coming and everything's working, then great. But if you're just kind of running out of steam or kind of stuck for how to start, use the song, man. Use the form of the tune, use the phrasing of the melody, and you'll have something to work with that will always work and always give you a starting place. And maybe once you get everything flowing, then the inspiration will take over and you'll start to have some new ideas you didn't even anticipate having in the first place. So that's the idea. And again, I've just finished teaching this entire arrangement of Matchbox Blues in the alternating thumb style in the key of A inside my membership, the Finger Style 5. So there's a complete set of lessons on how to play that arrangement at both a simple and a more embellished level. And coming up, I'm about to start teaching how to improvise on Matchbox Blues using this exact process I'm talking about, of breaking down what the rhythms of the melody are, how to develop your own licks, and how to develop new ideas using the phrasing of the original tune the blues scale, and how to develop the technique and the skills to change chords, swap in ideas, and develop your blues vocabulary so you can improvise on the songs that you play. If that's something you'd like to learn more about, go to the link below or the link on screen to check out the Finger Style 5. If you've got a question or a comment about today's lesson, please leave it down below. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.